hi there and welcome to my channel so today i'm going to show you how i made this summer dress with tie back detail for my covid clients i'm going to show you how i drafted the pattern and the skirt part and how i moved all of the darts around and all that fun stuff so if this interests you then let's get right in okay so the pattern i used for this dress is different from the natalie bray pattern that i usually use and uh, this is more friendlier for people who are plus size so after drafting the pattern the first thing to do is to transfer it to a fresh paper okay so i traced out my pattern on fresh paper and like i said before this pattern is perfect for curvy people the first thing to do is to transfer the shoulder dart to the underarm area or wherever you want to transfer it on your pattern so and this is to enable me to close the shoulder dart so i marked 4 cm down from the underarm and connected to the bust point then i slashed the line that i just connected all the way to the bust point and closed the shoulder dart once you slash the line and you close the shoulder dart this part automatically opens next measure the waist dart on the side of the paper and connect this way so, so normally i should have um done this before transferring the shoulder dart but it's still okay i'm going to be aligning the sides anyways next i'll put the i'll put this scrap paper under the dart and this is because i want to reblend the dart the dart that i just created and i'm also going to shorten it because if i sew all the way to the bust point then it's going to stick out when the garment is worn and this is not flattering on any garment at all so tape the paper down to secure it and after taping fold it over just like i'm doing to form a crease in the middle and use a tracing wheel to define the side of your pattern paper and once this is done roll a line in that mid crease that was created and also to shorten the dart i'm going to mark 2 cm down from the bust point then i'll connect from the this new midpoint to the original dart legs okay so now reshape the dart and go ahead to cut it to cut out the waist dart so this is how the side of the pattern will be equal when you sew up this dart and also notice that the pattern still has shape around the bust despite the fact that the shoulder that has been closed and the waist that has also been eliminated next thing now is to shape the neckline i want the width of the shoulder to be around four inches if you don't want the neck width to widen then you can shape from here and blend into the armhole and i also lower the neck depth to four inches this is the new neckline that i'm going to be working with so after doing all of this it's time to cut it out and to shape the back neck i place the front pattern neck width to neck width with the back so that i'm sure that the shoulder width is the same and then i blend it into the armhole i don't need this shoulder that's here for the back so it's going off completely so now let's go ahead to draft the tie back i placed the the curved part of my ruler this way and then i ruled down so i went down about um six inches in that slightly curved manner from the waist i marked seven inches up in a slanted manner also and i just blended it into the side of the waist but about 1.5 inches away from the side and this space in between these two points will be the what i'm going to use for the belt extension and it will also be the width of the belt so all this part is going off here is going off and all of this is also going off and i reshaped these sharp corners 
here so that it's going to be easy to sew and i also extended the rope out to about 25 inches which i may extend further so that there will be enough to tie you can extend as much as you want you can increase the width i wanted the rope to be five inches wide with allowance so that's why i marked it that half inch you see below and you can taper the belt at the end if you like i want to cut the back pattern with the with the rope at a go so i hope that i'm going to have enough fabric to do this but if i don't have enough fabric to cut it all at once then i might have to cut out the belt belt part and then rejoin to the back so now here are my pattern pieces this is the back which i'm going to cut two pieces of it and i also have the front that i will be cutting on fold so now i'll cut the skirt part straight on fabric i did not i'm not going to draft any pattern for this i have already marked out a zip allowance of one inch and i have bordered the fabric at the top by an inch also so i'm just imputing my vertical measurement that's my waist to hip my crunch and then the breaking point and the hem of the skirt and i want to believe that by now we all know how to draft our skirt from watching my videos but if you don't then you can check out the videos linked in the description and also the info card so you see you get a more detailed explanation on how to draft on how i draft skirt pattern next is to impute all the horizontal measurements starting with a quarter of the waist plus a 1.5 inch seam allowance so the waist is 44 44 divided by 4 is 11 plus 1.5 seam allowance on the hip line the hip i'm working with is 60 inches so 60 divided by 4 is 15 plus 1.5 and that's what i marked here 1.5 is my seam allowance and i also transferred this measurement at the hip to the crunch and then on the breaking point line i removed two inches from the 16.5 that i have on the crunch and the hip and also i that's what i marked here and transferred to the knee line so at the side of the skirt i marked 0 0.5 inch up and then at the center front i marked 0 0.5 inch down this is to shape the waistline for the front for just the front of the skirt the back waistline remains as it is the next thing to do now is the bomb illusion and to create the bomb illusion you just connect the breaking point to the hip line along the zip allowance and then from the waist you also connect to you blend into the hip line now so now this zip that we eliminated to create the bomb illusion will be added back to the side of the skirt but let me shape the side first so that so this will enable me to do that okay so after shaping i marked the zip allowance at the side and i blended it to the hip line from the hem also i marked the zip allowance i used one inch for my zip allowance i marked that all the way to the breaking point line at the side and then i also ruled i also connected so the lower part of this garment is also done and it's time to cut so after cutting the skirt and the top and the front this is what i have left and apparently this won't cut it won't cut the back piece on fold going i'm just going to split this pattern here this paper is what i am now going to use to cut the rope part and which i will now reattach to the bodies when joining and you can either cut a lining a separate lining to use to finish the raw edges if you want to line the dress but 
this fabric i'm using is thick enough so, so the first thing i'm going to do now is to turn the neckline of the garment after which i'll finish the armhole too with the bias tape and then i'll go ahead to sew the dart and then join the upper part to the lower part of the front i'll do the same for the back so i'm just going to have zip at the lower part of the back i'm not going to since the it's a tie back dress then i'm going to go ahead to finish up the dress sew the sides and everything when i finished this is how it looked on her she really liked it i like it too the fit is just perfect